and welcome to Crystal Guard. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway and I'll be your host for the show. We have a lot to reveal today and to kick things off, let's get a first introduction to our new attacker Osa and some of the other changes coming with Crystal Guard. Take it away, Chris Waters and Ubisoft News. Rainbow Six Siege is introducing some new hardware with the reveal of Crystal Guard, and it's giving the attackers a chance to do some constructive redecorating. A new operator named Osa has designed transparent, bulletproof shields that she can deploy in windows, doors, or the middle of the floor. Can she give her attacker allies the power to reinforce a position and turn the map to their advantage? Or will the defenders see right through her plans? Crystal Guard is also bringing operator balance tweaks to IQ, Fuse, and Twitch, a flashy rework to flashbangs, and map updates to Clubhouse, Coastline, and Bank. Osa joins Team Rainbow as a medium speed, medium armor attacker. She can protect herself and her allies with her Talon 8 clear shields. This gadget brings a little bit of defense to the offense, as Osa can set it up to offer bulletproof cover in otherwise exposed positions to help attackers dig in and push on. But as you can clearly see, there are some big differences between the Talon 8 and the Defender's deployable shields. While they're roughly the same size, the Talon 8 is taller and protects Osa's head when she carries it, unlike the deployable shield. Also, it's see-through. You can see your enemies, and they can see you. Usually when this happens in Siege, someone is dead almost immediately. But the Talon 8s can create some pretty intense stare-downs. Osa's shields can establish angles in key doorways, down lengthy hallways, or from the bottom or top of a window, as she can deploy them while on repel. And if there's a breakable barricade where she wants to deploy it, Anyone on the other side is in for a fun surprise! And much like Mira's Black Mirrors, Osa's shields have a pressurized canister that can be punctured to drop the shield entirely. Osa brings a lot of utility to help modify the battlefield to her allies' advantage, and set up formidable fortifications to give the defenders a taste of their own medicine. Along with Osa, Crystal Guard is bringing map updates to Clubhouse, Coastline, and Bank, operator balancing tweaks to IQ, Fuse, and Twitch, as well as a few more improvements that the team is very excited to share with you. So we'll send it back to Camille, and on with the show. Now that you've had a look at Osa in action, I know the wheels are turning, because now we have an attacker that's building things up instead of tearing them down. For more on who Osa is and how she's shaking things up, here's game designer Emilian Lomay and writer Simon Ducharme. So Osa's gadget is the Talent Shield. The Talent Shield is our attempt to provide for the attacking team something that is more common with the Defender playstyle, which is a deployable gadget, something that you use to fortify a position, this original fantasy of attack and defense is still quite strong, but we also know that attacker in Rainbow Six Siege needs to secure the map, needs to take forward position, needs to flank watch once they've done that. And the idea of bringing a gadget that inherently feels like a defender gadget, but on the attacker side, allows us to reinforce that playstyle. So what we want to see is, as an attacker, I have secured a position, I deploy the shield, this is mine, this is my fortified position, this is like this outpost in Defender's territory from which I can now cover my teammate, I can now execute on site, I can throw smoke for this position, like, I can hold position and angles that before were not available to my team at all. You can equip the shield in your hands and move with the shield. It's very similar to a shield operator, a lot less strong, so you are at least as vulnerable as a blitz shield for example. But contrary to a blitz shield, you cannot charge, you cannot flash the enemy, you cannot melee them with your own shield. So she's not designed to be used that way at all. You can be safe for a little while by the time to place your shield, but not much more. We wanted the full transparency, so you can see both sides through the shield. We believe this is a very interesting gameplay element. 
those few seconds of tension when you both look at each other in your eyes and you're ready to shoot are invaluable. Because it's bulletproof glass shield and, and now in siege bulletproof glass can be shattered, attackers can use that as well. The security window on Clubhouse, for example, is looking towards bedroom and master bedroom and gym and you don't really want the defender to use it, so you can place your own shield there, shatter your own shield with your own melee to shut the line of sight. So that shattering effect, even though it's more, mostly intended as a counter available to defense, is a tool that the attacker can use in a clever way. And I'm sure there are many more options that we'll see happen in the future. So you have to be very careful because defenders will be able to get rid of your shield. They can use impact grenade and C4, those are explosive, they're gonna wipe the shield right away. If you're behind it and the C4 explodes, you're in a very tough spot. Tashanka, like smoke for example, if they see someone, and they will because the shield is transparent, they can literally smoke you out. And, and that's very risky for you. So Osa is not a guaranteed safe spot. Okay, so for loadout, we've used weapon that you are very familiar with. The first one is the 556 from Thermite. It sees AR, very powerful weapon, but so far only Thermite get to use it and it has a very specific role. So we want to see how this weapon behaves on a very different operator. Second one is the PDW9. So that's the SMG from Jackal. This is to give you a more aggressive option, uh, I would argue, and I think People that's gonna choose one or the other are gonna play Osa very differently, and that's definitely the point. And finally, uh, for the secondary weapon, she has the PMM. Uh, that's because I like the PMM, and I wanted her to have the PMM. Ten seconds. The one thing that we gave her was the Claymore, because having the Claymore to at least protect yourself from flanks is uh, definitely something useful. And then you have the smoke grenade, that was a suggestion we got from uh, pro workshops where our professional player advised us to use this because having this shield as a fortified position and an advanced position allows you to drop your smoke on site from a much closer position. And it's very interesting. Like this idea of having the shield as a way to support the push, support the execution, and eventually we use the shield as a way to defend the, the, the fuser once it's blended, is very interesting. As far as role goes, you can make her in the same category as a nomad or gridlock. She's very different, very different. But if we really want to put a word on it, she would be similar to those because she is here for map control. That being said, since our gadget is deployable, you can even have them used by your teammates while you go on a flank. So many strategies are going to come, come with this one. But I love the fact that we never know. The creativity you can have with it is unfathomable. I can't wait to see what the community is going to come up with. Osa is a character that's been behind the scenes of Rainbow for a while now because uh, Nighthaven has always been known for its top-of-the-line top technology. She's actually the one who designs most of it. So she is, she's Nighthaven's tech genius. She founded their R&D department called Quantum Concepts and Robotics, or QCR for short. Kali's Level, Bomai's Magnet, Aruni's Prosthetics, she made those things. Osa's from Croatia. Her, her name is actually Anja Katarina Jankovic. Her family, the Jankovic, are owners of an international toy store brand. Her aunt is the one that basically raised her and put her, put her through school, uh, showed her how to make toys, and eventually you know, led her to her passion for making things and engineering. And then another interesting thing is Osa's code name, which is Croatian for WASP. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with her career or her path or anything that she does. It's a symbolic thing. She chose the name herself because she feels like other people see her as like standoffish and hostile almost. But really she just wants people to know that she's just very protective of her personal life and that you, if you give her space, she'll give you space as well and she'll respect you. For Map Reworks, the level design team usually takes a hammer to make big changes to one map. For this season, they're trying something new and breaking out their scalpels for some precise updates to three maps. Jeremy Dosette is here to talk about the map buffs to Clubhouse, Coastline, and Bank. All we were going to do is move a bomb into, into stage next to bar and do a few tweaks to bar. So we added a doorway in between bar and made the flow an awful lot nicer and better, so it's easier to defend. And then 
whilst we were looking at it, we cleared out a path through kennels from main gate turn right. We went through and actually put a path through there as well. So now you can actually navigate like a full 360 around the map rather than having to repel up over buildings. We went through and cleaned up a lot of issues that are with that map. With the tech being updated, it means sounds better, lighting's better, you know, propagation and gadget deployments better. But for Clubhouse, that was it. It was just moving the bomb. So we hope it's going to get picked a little bit more. So Coastline, the changes were a, a much bigger. We added a breakable wall on the outside of VIP, which means there's access from the, from the deck in now. And then we added rappels up from the DJ deck to the roof, just underneath purple tops. Then courtyard, we made changes where originally the windows couldn't be barricaded. They're actually now barricadable, which makes a huge difference because you can block off lines of sight towards a bomb site. That's, that's on all the floors. The other thing that changed a little bit is down in kitchen with service entrance. So we've added a little, next to the bathroom where you have the desk, where you have the soft walls, we've added a doorway window actually further into the room, which means you've actually got to go through and you know, go through service to actually um, take advantage of the site. The bombs moved slightly but not, not too much. Walls are redone, destruction's redone, everything's brought up to the standard that we actually want it to be at now. So it's a great quality of life change. Bank's been a long time coming. We rebuilt it from the ground up. All the walls are exactly in the same place, you know, maybe five centimetres different. The sight lines from the skylights, you know, maybe gave you a little bit too much of a view. The arched windows from um, exterior of garage, you know, we blocked those off, so shooting to banana, is harder. Adding cover to banana, so it's cover, non-cover, cover, non-cover. Non also, there used to be a big pile of filing cabinets right at the main entrance. We took those out and put a doorway there. So now you've actually, rather than just going through the double doorway from entrance, you've actually got an option where you can go through. So if you are pinched and you are having a gunfight, you can actually have two people and actually take the person down. And then making the railings at the top of square destructible, and you know, we can pause for the applause. We removed the bars from vault because when you have a gunfight in vault, most of the bullets are gonna hit the bars and you never hit your target, which is a, a source of massive frustration when you're playing those sites. You know, same thing for gold vault, money vault. We took, we took the bars out of there. The bars have gone from the entire map. There's other things. We moved the hatch in lobby so it drops into vault. People wouldn't spawn at front because chances are you're going to get run out on, so we fixed those. You can still do them, but with the faster detection and the things we've done to move the vehicles around, you can still do them, but you're going to be detected and they're going to know you're there, like the, uh, the attackers will know you're there. So if you spawn in the front of jewelry where the manhole that goes down into tunnel, we add an alleyway all the way through so you can go to the back axis, to terrace and everything else. We've played with the elevators, moved them around a little bit. They're still in the elevator shafts, obviously, but we've moved them around, changed the hatches and the, the way you can actually go into the elevators. So they're a little bit more usable. It's time that Bank needed some love and Bank's got some love. At our Future of Siege panel back in February, we teased that changes were coming to Elite Skins. Some of these new customization options are launching with Crystal Guard. And there are many more on the way in the future. Matt Daigle from the customization team has more. So currently when you buy an Elite, all of the assets in that Elite bundle are linked together. So you either equip all of it or none of it. So we've worked to solve that uh, as we showcased at the SI this year. We're going to be rolling it out in two stages. The first stage we wanted to bring to players as soon as possible, so for the upcoming season, players will be able to select between headgears and uniforms individually. For example, if you have uh, Tachanka's unicorn headgear and you want to mix it with his elite, you can do that. For the first stage, the op cards, victory dances, and the ability skins will remain linked to the uniform. So the second stage will be the product and feature we fully envision, where players will be able to mix and match between every single asset, ability skins, victory dances, op cards, their favorite headgears and uniforms. Um, and we also are bringing some customization options to op cards, but we'll let you know more about that in the future. We're looking forward to seeing everyone's favorite and unique combinations. Balancing a live game never stops. And in this next segment, we're talking updates for Twitch, Fuse, IQ, along with an adjustment 
to the flash detection system. Daniel Perez from Ubisoft Barcelona is the person to go over these changes. Take it away, Daniel. There are a couple of things we wanted to change for Twitch. For right now, Twitch starts the match during the preparation phase using her own unique drone, unlike most other attackers. Some players may know already, we are planning to allow attackers to switch their selected operator during the preparation phase. So it didn't really make much sense anymore to allow you to start using Twitch drone as the change between operators should be seamless. So we wanted her to start the match with a regular drone instead. Given that we were already changing the drone we spawn with, we wanted to also investigate improving the feel of Twitch's drone. So we decided to remove the restriction that it can't jump, so it will be able to jump just as any drone. We also wanted to remove the electricity damage, so we changed it to laser, which is a different kind of damage. It should be mostly the same for players, but it has a huge benefit, and it is that it has infinite range, so you won't miss any shots anymore because the gadget is too far away. The big change here is that we are also allowing now to deploy the charge on reinforced surfaces. This is a big change and it has a trade-off. First of all, if you do this, there will be a delayed activation time, which will give a heads up to defenders that it's coming, so defenders will be able to be ready and counter it using either electricity or a mute device as before, but also it will spawn a tube which can be actually shot at and destroyed in order to stop the pellets from coming. Well, this should make life better for Fuse users, definitely. We are hoping to see a little bit of an increase on its presence in the game. For defenders, we don't believe this is going to be too punishing, although we'll be monitoring the change, of course. Basically, what we're doing here is allowing IQ users to use the smart ping system for any gadget that you detect using her electric field detector. This is actually a pretty cool change because we have brought over some new tech to the game uh, in order to allow us to use 2D UI elements in 3D meshes. And here I wanted to give a huge thanks to our lead UI programmer in Ubisoft Barcelona, Jose Manuel Fernandez, who made it possible. So we hope that allowing IQ to ping enemy gadgets using the smart ping system should improve team communication even when there's no voice chat as every teammate will be able to see what she's seen. But also, like in the monitor itself, IQ will be able to see the icons themselves before pinging them, which should also allow her to identify elements easier. We're aware that a rework for the Flash has been a long time coming, because as an attacker you may not feel confident enough to use it to stun an enemy. And we believe that it basically boils down to two reasons. First of all, even if you actually hit someone with a stun grenade and they're in range, they may still get affected with such a low intensity that it may not even look like they've been flashed at all, and they are still able to see with perfect clarity or at least good enough. And also, for defenders it was probably a little bit too easy to counter because you just needed to literally turn around, not see the flash blast, and then you're good to go. So we wanted to change these things. When you get flash, you now will always get flash at full intensity, so you always will see your full screen completely white. However, what we're changing now is the, du the duration of the flash. So if you're far away or partially blocked, you will get a much shorter flash. We have changed the detection algorithm itself to account for multiple parameters. So even if you're looking in the opposite direction, you will still get a little bit of flash because we're trying to simulate rays of light bouncing off walls in the immediate environment to make it more reliable when you try to use it. One of the major issues our community has dealt with over the past few years is the visibility of operators in certain situations. To discuss how we're addressing this issue in Crystal Guard and other quality of life changes coming with the season, we have UX designer Sebastien Francois.
So the issue with the current system is that some uniforms on some operators can blend very, very well uh, with the background in some maps. And that makes it very frustrating for players to, to try and notice them and have a fair gunfight. So to fix the issue, uh, we are adding rim lighting to enemies. So now you will see just a little bit of light on the edge of the operator, and that will make it much easier for you to notice them uh, in the map. So the rim lighting will be applied on all enemies, on any skin, in any map, uh, but you still have the option to turn that off if you prefer the old look. There should be no more frustration when trying to engage in gunfights and where you could barely see your enemy. Uh, that shouldn't happen anymore. That's the objective for this change. Um, so of course, we'll be listening to feedback, and if we need to tweak that a little bit more, we'll do it. But uh, that's the, the objective.